Welcome to Ramadan Ready, where we get you ready for the month of Ramadan. Now, Dr. Shabir, a common question that people have is about the Tarawih prayers. What are they? When did they come about? And are they obligatory? So maybe mm. you could talk about that. Yeah, so, so that's an interesting question. You know, Tarawih, by, by definition, means something that involves rest. And, and it is um, interesting that Tarawih has become like something that is, is very arduous among, uh, among Muslims. And some, some Muslims will insist it has to be that many rakats and so on. But actually, there's a lot of flexibility with this. It is mentioned uh, in, in a narrative that the Prophet, peace be upon him, came out and prayed with his community uh, one of, on one of the nights of Ramadan. And then the, uh, people told each other the next night more people came. And then the next night, even more people came. <laughs> so eventually, the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not come out to pray with the community. And uh, they were making signals from the mosque to get him to come out, um, at least to let him know that they're there and, and waiting for him to come and, and pray with them. Uh, but the Prophet, peace be upon him, left them to play, pray on their own. And uh, in the morning, when he came out for the regular morning prayers, it is related that he said to them that I knew of your presence, uh, but I deliberately uh, refrained from coming out because I didn't want this to become obligatory on you. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the explanation of this given by scholars is that if the Prophet, peace be upon him, did this regularly with them and he became comfortable with them, with that practice, uh, then it might be seen as an obligatory uh, practice among Muslims. And then uh, if, you, if you think of that being passed on generation after generation, uh, later on people might not be able to do that. Uh, so it's better that the, the, the way the Prophet, peace be upon him, left it, that it remained a kind of optional practice. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it remained like that, uh, the narratives go, uh, in the time of Abu Bakr, who was the first caliph, and then during the time of Omar, who was the next caliph in line, it is reported that Muslims were praying in separate groups in the mosque. Mm -hmm. So Omar, the caliph, saw it um, apt to gather everybody together and have them led by be, uh, let them be led by one reciter. Whose is, that, name, is that when it started to be called Tarawih prayer? Um, it's not clear when it started to be called Tarawih prayers, but um, uh, this is when uh, most scholars will say it became a formal and regular practice among Muslims mm. uh, to pray at least behind one reciter as opposed to doing it informally uh, in various groups, a group coming, praying, leaving another group coming, praying and leaving, maybe two different groups praying in the mosque at one time mm -hmm. uh, be behind separate leaders. Um, but it became a unified practice in the time of Omar. And from then onwards, it, became, it, it, it was established as a regular and unified practice uh, among Muslims. Now, the, the number of uh, cycles in that prayer is reported uh, variously. And uh, two different opinions uh, basically have emerged. Uh, one is that this, uh, uh, what is called the Tarawih prayer, is basically what is normally called Tahajjud prayers. Hmm. Uh, and Tahajjud prayers uh, is, is a special prayer during the night, which is voluntary, and which uh, usually consists of uh, eight rakats. It could be any number of rakats, basically, starting with two. Uh, but eight is a, is, is a kind of, uh, you can say, a happy medium. It's not too much, it's not too little. And... Um, uh, so some think that that's the same prayer and it's just moved to the early part of the night to make it convenient for people to gather in the mosque and do it rather than uh, pray it at home in the wee hours of the morning as you might have done with the Tajjud prayer. So in that case, they say it is really eight rakats. And there is a narrative that uh, backs that up where the mother of the believers, Aisha, says uh, that may God be pleased with her. She says that uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, used to pray and this is how many he prayed. And it turns out to be eight rakats. On the other hand, there are narratives which seem to indicate that there were 20 rakats. And uh, that may have been because uh, some uh, people found that if you're just praying eight rakats and you want to finish reading the entire Quran in the whole month during these prayers, that would mean reading one thirtieth part of the Quran each, uh, each night. And if you read that much in, in just eight rakats, by the time you divvy up the whole uh, part, it, uh, the, the one thirtieth part, uh, into the eighth, uh, into the eight cycles of prayer, then it would require a long standing in each cycle, and people's feet will start to get tired, and 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 so on. So, to make it easier and the standing to be a little bit shorter, um, the twenty rakats might have been introduced to stretch them out. And nowadays, the 
uh, printed uh, copies of the Quran are often arranged such, they're typeset to give you uh, 20 pages in each 30th part hmm. uh, for a total of about 600 pages altogether. 20 times 30, you can work the, do the math. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that allows you then to read one page in each cycle of the prayer. So you finish it in 20, in 20 cycles um, during that uh, special night prayer called the Tarawih. So it, it is a special prayer. We shouldn't be quarreling too much about the number of cycles. If you're comfortable praying eight, do so. If you're comfortable, comfortable praying 20, do so. Uh, if what's established in your local mosque is a certain number of rakats, join with them and pray with them if you can. But at the end of the day, just recall that it is a voluntary prayer. If you can do it happily and uh, for the pleasure of God, then do it. If you feel that this is a great burden, uh, then do what you can as much as you can. Uh, pray some in the mosque, some at home. Uh, keep your uh, home alive with prayers as well, especially during the month of Ramadan. And that is the whole spirit of the Tarawih. Uh, prayer. We'll leave it at that. Join us for another episode of Ramadan Ready tomorrow. If you enjoy our content and you think our work is important, we invite you to join our journey. Support us. Together, we can take Let the Quran Speak to the next level.